Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi, and welcome to Postscript. I'm Luann Riley, Grow Group Director, and I'm here with Pastor Ken, who just started a four-part series called Next, a look at the life of Simon Peter. And today you talked to, gave us a great intro into um, Peter and how we're going to look at his journey of faith. Many of us can relate to um, a lot of the things that he struggled really with. Um, and we had several questions come in. We're going to look at um, what do you do if you're in one stage and your spouse is in another. Okay. We're going to also look at... Um, how do we firm up our beliefs even though we weren't there in the boat that oh, day? Okay. And um, then we're lastly going to look at how do we know that we're hearing from God to take the next step? Right, so good. I'm just going to jump All right good. in with the first one. Okay. Um, so you've heard a lot about being uh, spiritually yoked with your spouse. Right. Um, and so is this the same as being at different stages? Uh, what do you do if your spouse is at, say, the sit and listen phase and mm -hmm. you're in the take and fishing phase? How do you help your spouse grow in their faith? Sure. Well, you, you go slow. I think um, Peter addressed that. Re see, if you, if you jump over, we're talking about Peter, but you jump over to the letters that he wrote years later when he's a strong Christian and, and he's writing to the Christians. And some of the ladies, the, the married Christian ladies were saying, can we divorce our husbands? They're losers. They don't love Jesus. Can we just move on? And so Peter is addressing that very thing. Um, I'm going to say the questioner was asking that severe, but, but I think it's relevant what he says. So uh, wives in the first uh, Peter three wives in the same way submit yourselves to your own husbands so that if any of them do not believe the word they may be won over without words by the behavior of their wives when they see the purity and the reverence of your lives your beauty shouldn't come from outward adornment um, hairstyles and jewelry and all that kind of stuff but inwardly mm. And, and, and so what he was saying is, hey, you could play a crucial role. No, don't drop the guy. Model for him what the Lord has done in you. And who knows, but maybe that'll bring him alone, mm -hmm. long. So I've seen examples of that right here at Faith Bridge that are very inspiring. I'm, I was uh, thinking particularly about a situation some several years ago when that we were, I think, maybe raising the money to build this building or something. And a, and a wife came up and said, you know, I would really like to be generous and support. I believe in this and love the Lord and blah, blah, blah. But my husband's just not, just not in it. And what should I do? And sh should I just do it anyhow? And I was like, no, I don't think so. I think in this instance... You know, you've got two things going on. You've got uh, a biblical instruction to be generous, tithing, you know, whatever. And you've got this, which I just read. I think you got to defer to this one first. And don't start with this one. Let's start with this one. And in time, we'll just trust that God's going to soften his heart and he'll be ready to, to do that part as well. So maybe that can be relevant to the questioner's Right. Thank you. And so for the next question, um, an interesting question, uh, looking at the apostles, even the 12 apostles that Jesus chose needed miracles to be convinced that he was God and to see him. How can we, who um, have not experienced the same miracles, how can we be certain and, and be shored up in our faith of who he is? Right. Like us, because right. none of us have seen him yet with our own two eyes. We've seen his power and we've seen his, his presence in our life, his, his hand, you know, working. And I think it's a progressive thing. I think, you know, uh, one uh, step of faith uh, is rewarded and you kind of notate, okay, I got to note to self. I, I, let's remember how that felt and how that came about. And not that God ever always works in the same way, but let's let's just see if you know. And the next one comes, and and you see God work, and you just sort of develop this ability to 
say, okay, I'm going to walk where I sense that you're saying walk. You're always looking for scriptural confirmation, for maybe a character in scripture, or some verses that speak exactly to the situation. Um, and Christian community can be helpful as well. And so, um, but, you know, I was thinking of Thomas, um, Doubting Thomas. Remember, he he just could not believe that Jesus was alive. Everybody else says, he's alive. But Thomas says, I, I can't believe it until I see it. And finally, Jesus appears, and he lets him touch and, and, and see, and then he believes and says, my Lord and my God. This is at the end of John. And then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed, but blessed are those who've not seen and yet have believed. Well, so I think we have to just keep in mind, because that's most of us. Mm -hmm. Peter and a few of the others did get to see some pretty big things. Even that, it was new for them, because Jesus was just new to all of them. And um, But we step forward in faith, and um, from step to step we go. Great. And so the first step being the step out in faith, but talking through these stages mm -hmm. of your faith journey today. Right. Um, how do I know when and where to take the next step? Um, this person that wrote in this question said that they have a stirring in their heart for a while mm -hmm. that they've been hearing God's calling, mm -hmm. um, but they're just not sure what that next step should be. How, how do you discern that? What, where God's calling to you to for the next step? Right, well, C number two, uh, <laughs> scripture. I think if we're if we're if we're really feeding on God's word, He's going to speak to us. Um, even this past week in my devotional life, on Thursday in particular, I was at this real crossroads trying to figure out: Do I do this or do I do that? And I was just studying um, just the normal plan that that you know, you've kind of got your plan, whatever your plan is. And so I was just on the verses of my plan. And God just reached out and grabbed me through that. And so you're going to his word. Sometimes if we're trying to discern what's the next step, what do you want me to do, Lord? This is community. Mm -hmm. Christian community is so important, mm -hmm. crucial to this, to have a brother or a sister in Christ or two of them that you can say, you know, I'm thinking about this. I'm thinking about that. I'm just, I'm looking for wisdom. You know, we're praying hard about it. Do you have any impressions? You know, or if you're just a blank slate and you're like, I, I want to take a next step. I just don't have any idea what my next step would be. Well, I think, you know, sometimes you just give it time and, and he, he'll make it louder and mm -hmm. louder and it, it, it'll get clearer and clearer. Um, so just stay with it. I know I found in my life that it doesn't go away. That's right. Right, no matter how what I do and pray about it or sure. line it up with scripture, you can't shake you, it. You can't shake it. If it it's from the Lord, it continues yeah, to be. He's gonna. He's Jonah. He didn't want to go preach to the Ninevites, uh, and he did his gut level best to not. Mm. But it just got louder and louder, mm -hmm. and he ended up there. Well, great. I uh, really uh, enjoyed this look today and have some steps to think through. And I know our groups will um, have some great conversation around the steps as well this week. So Good. thank you very much. And thank you for joining us here for Postscript. We'll see you back here next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org postscript.